Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves on God. All those able, please rise for our call to worship found in your orders for service. O oh Lord, you have searched us and known us. We know when we sit down and when we rise up. You search our paths and are acquainted with all our ways. You are above us, below us, on each side of us. Where can we flee from your presence? Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you opened for us a new way into your presence. We ask that you give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. seated. If we pretend that we have it all together and that we haven't done anything wrong, we are delusional. We aren't fooling God. But if we are honest and vulnerable, then God will be gracious and forgive us. Not only that, God will work on the inside of us to transform us so that we might transform the world. As God's people, let us be honest about ourselves as we confess together using the confession printed in the bulletin. Trinity of love, in the light of your grace, 
we see the harm we have done to family and friends. In the light of your love, we see the bad choices we have made and the truth that we have shunned. Heal us of our sin, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your love so that we may follow your way and live the good news of the gospel. Amen. Hear the words of the assurance of pardon. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our wrongs. As far as the east is from the west, so far the Lord has removed our transgressions from us. be with you all. If you are here with us in the sanctuary, please wave or nod your head to one another. If you are at home with family or friends, please share the signs of peace with one another. And if you are worshiping by yourself at home, give yourself a hug and know that the peace of Christ is with you this morning. You may be seated. Oh, it's so good to be in the sanctuary with all of you, and I'm so glad that those of you who are watching us from St. Augustine and surrounding communities and all the way out to Washington State and everywhere else, we are glad that y'all are with us this morning. It's so good to see you. I wanted to lift up a couple of great things to celebrate this morning. Last week I mentioned that our high school uh, youth group, rather than going to Montreat, which is the Mecca for Presbyterians um, in, up in North Carolina, they did hold a stay, surf, and serve camp this past week out on Butler Beach, and it was a roaring success. We had uh, 10 high schoolers come out for that, and they learned how to be together in socially responsible distancing sort of ways and they learned, some of them, how to surf for the first time, and I got to go out there one time, and it was great. What? You can't hear me? I'm muffled? You're wearing your mask. Oh, I'm wearing my mask, you're right. Look how responsible I have become. I was wearing my mask, and I had forgotten that I was supposed to take it off. Thank you, Adele. So, where was I? Stay, surf, and serve. So the surf camp, was awesome. Uh, Miss Beth Masters over here to my left, she was in charge of that along with a college or a recent college graduate, uh, Maria, and I know that it went really well. Rachel McNeil, our director of youth ministries, oversaw the entire program. Kids learned more about God, their faith deepened, and of course they learned how to surf, which I was glad to see. Um, also, so the last two weeks we have had different Sunday school classes meeting in socially distanced ways in the fellowship hall, and that is going really well. Again, we are doing a very soft re-entry, and um, it's going great. Everybody is being responsible, and we are uh, reconnecting in ways that are meaningful and important. So I just wanted to let you know about these great things that are going on in our faith community. So those of you who were with us last year around this time, as kids transition back to school, our church did what's called a hygiene bag rally. And this is through the outreach committee. 
So again, this year, we will be participating in trying to provide hygiene bags to homeless middle and high school students in our local schools. And you will be able to sign up through eBite, through the church office, and drop off your supplies in the church parking lot at a designated Wednesday, um, July 29th, between 5 and 6 p.m., or Thursday, July 30th, between 10 and 11 a.m. The Evites will be going out to ask people to participate. We do have roughly in the neighborhood of 400 homeless middle and high school students in our county, and they need our assistance, not just hygiene bags, but in other ways that folks are trying to address. So be on the lookout for how you can help with this endeavor. Last year, we just we did a great job with that in terms of providing what folks were asking for. Again, it is just really good to be with you all today. Now we turn our time to the Word of God. Let me pray. Gracious God, let your word rule in our hearts and your spirit govern our lives until at last we see the fulfillment of your realm of justice and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Our first reading, our Old Testament reading, comes from Genesis chapter 20, 28, verses 10 through the first part of verse 19. Listen for the word of God. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for a night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. The Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from the, his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and then picking up in verse 36, going to 43. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, 
Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather up the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And then they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, over the years, I've taken out a significant portion of the grass at mine and Amy and William's home. And when I have taken this grass out of our yard, I've planted different types of plants, mostly subtropicals and whatnot, things that are beautiful to me and to us. In doing this, I have a whole new appreciation for this morning's parable in the Gospel. The parable that Jesus tells asks this question, did you not sow good grain in your field? Where then did all these weeds come from? This question is asked by the servants or slaves of the landowner when they begin to see the weeds cropping up among the weeds of the weeds cropping up among the wheat. Over the years, I have tried just about everything to keep the weeds out of my beds that I've planted. But all, they always seem to come back. They, they crawl up through pine straw, they crawl up through newspaper, even weed guard. It is almost impossible to keep some weeds out of the garden. In the parable, the helpful servants, as they are called, when they see the garden of wheat full of weeds, they kindly make an offer to the landowner. They say, do you want us to go and gather these weeds for you? <clears throat> to which the landowner wisely instructs them in a lesson that I have learned over and over. In gathering the weeds, he tells them, you would uproot the wheat along with them. It is a tough thing maybe for us to get our minds around, but what Jesus is trying to tell them, and what I suspect for a church or two since Jesus' time, the servant's idea of plucking up the weeds seemed like the perfect solution. Here, as Jesus instructed the disciples, here the 12 disciples are gathered around Jesus. They are the ones who have the inside scoop about Jesus' mission and ministry. They thought they knew better than anyone else just who Jesus was and what he came to do. They believed that they had the right theology, the right ideas about ministry. They were sure that they understood everything about who he was and who, what he was all about. They believed, of course, that they were the good wheat planted by the sower. 
And they also, of course, seemed pretty certain who the weeds were as well. It stands to reason that if you know who the good wheat is, if you know who the good flowers are, let's say, or the good plants, and you also know who the good, or who, you also know who the weeds are, isn't it the best thing then to weed out the weeds? Isn't it the best thing then to take out the troublemakers and let the wheat be about the business of growing with health and vitality? That's what reason would tell us. If you know what's good and you think you know what's bad, then take out the bad and the good will grow. In fairness to those servants in the parable, I know that certain thoughts have crossed my mind over the years that I know who the weeds are that I need to pluck out and here are the good flowers or here is the good wheat. I distinctly remember a time at a presbytery meeting, which is a gathering of the 59 churches in our area to do business. We were at a presbytery meeting not terribly long ago, a few years, and I sat there as a heated debate went on and on and on. I remember there, sitting there, thinking to myself, how much better would it be if we could just to have a couple of these people decide to move to another presbytery? Somewhere, anywhere. You know, get the weeds out and the wheat will grow strong. I kept thinking how much easier and more pleasant our meetings would be. Get rid of the weeds and the wheat will grow so much better. So knowing this about myself, and that's not the only time I've done that, of course, I don't fault those servants in the parable, or I don't fault the disciples or the rest of us gathered that day at the Presbytery meeting. I don't fault people when they want to pluck out the weeds because the truth is, sometimes life, sometimes ministry is much easier without the weeds growing amidst the wheat. Sometimes there are weeds that inhibit the healthy growth of the garden. But what the parable points to and what I have learned, that there is a problem with weeding the garden. It is not the job of the servants. Did you pick that up in the parable? The servants never go into the wheat and start pulling the weeds. The master says, don't do it. The master says this to the servants because weeding the garden is the master's job. It is not always easy to tell the weeds from the wheat, which in part is the point of the parable. Even if we think we know which is which, this is the wheat and these are the weeds, even if we think we know which is which, there is danger in trying to rid ourselves of the weeds because we will uproot good wheat in the process. And I will confess to you that, that sometimes I thought I have known who the weeds were in the garden, only to find out, much to my shame, that the weeds resembled wheat a lot more than I thought. 
And truthfully, there have been times when I, myself, look more like a weed than wheat. For better or for worse, Jesus' parable reminds us that the weeds and the wheat will grow together always this side of the harvest. You see, God has a little different understanding of gardening than we do. And I suppose that is a good thing. So then, what is the wheat supposed to do? If we listen to Jesus and his parable, we are called to live among the weeds and leave the harvest up to the master. For God alone knows our hearts and our intentions. God alone knows who the weeds are and who the wheat is. And honestly, again, because there have been times when I have looked more like a weed than wheat, I am glad it is not up to us to decide which is which. And so I encourage you today, you here and you listening at home, May you leave the weeding of the garden to the master. For who but the master really knows the weeds from the wheat? To God be the glory today and for all eternity. Amen. Let us stand and affirm what we believe using an excerpt from the Confession of 1967. Let us affirm what we believe together. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of the human mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals divine love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of a cross, and goodness in receiving sinful men and women. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. You may be seated. Let us join our hearts and minds as we come together in a time of prayer. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Gracious God, affirm your presence with us as we continue to worship in new and different ways. Let us feel that we are in the house of the Lord and see the gate of heaven when we come to you whether we are worshiping in the sanctuary, wearing masks and being socially distanced, or at home, maybe still in our pajamas, drinking coffee, or maybe watching the service later in a still, quiet moment of our day. Open the eyes of our hearts to see you and worship you wherever we are, knowing that you are already there. We give thanks for the youth who spent a week learning and worshiping and seeing you in new ways through the Stay, Surf, and Serve camp. 
We are grateful for Rachel and the youth team who created something so very new, so very quickly. We give thanks for Ann Reed and the Christian education team who are developing plans for this fall in an ever-changing environment. We ask for prayers for the staff of this church as we continue to find new ways to provide meaningful connections and worship within our current context. Merciful God, we lift to you the life and memories of those who have run their race, who have run the race of their life well, and are now at rest in the love of your everlasting arms. We understand that this is a particularly difficult time in the passing of heroes and icons, some of them personal and some of them not known to us quite as well. We especially remember in our congregation today Bill McPherson, who is in hospice in Tampa, and Mason Hicks, who is traveling to North Carolina for brain surgery later this week. We pray for all those who are struggling with a diagnosis or an illness that is overwhelming, yet may be unseen. May the prayers of this community be felt by all as far as our prayers can be heard and proclaimed. <clears throat> Healing God, we seek your guidance for clarity and courage in the midst of this pandemic. We continue to pray for the medical personnel in our hospitals and nursing homes. We pray for the medical researchers working on vaccines. We pray for the service personnel who allow us to shelter in place and retain some normalcy. We pray for the parents and teachers who are trying to figure out what learning will look like in a few short weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our fervent prayers. We lift these prayers to you, mighty God, the ones that we have spoken this morning and the ones that remain unspoken in our hearts. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now turn our time to the, uh, to the time of giving our gifts and our offerings. When we offer part of ourselves, either a monetary gift or the gift of our time, we are giving thanks to God. With grateful hearts, let us bring our offerings to God this morning. There are four ways that you can give. If you are here worshiping with us, um, there are plates as you exit. You can put your offering in the plates. You may send a check to the church office. You may go to the website and click the Give Now button. Or you can text, let's see make sure I'm getting this right, S-T-A-M-P-C to 73256. So there are four different ways to give. Let us bring our offerings to the Lord this morning. Crowds have lined the narrow street to see this man from Galilee. Just a carpenter, some say, leading fools astray. Yet many kneel to give him praise. And in his eyes they glimpse the palm that sees the hearts of all men. And he knows his father's mind. He speaks his father's words when he comes in the name of the Lord. There
plans have fallen through and when my strength is nearly gone when there's nothing left to do but just depend on you and the power of your name and as we call upon your name your strength through wisdom will show we can know the master's plan extend the master's hand when we come There is strength in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. His name to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. We praise you and thank you for calling us to be your holy people. We thank you for your love, your grace that sustains us all, and your call that challenges us to follow Jesus more faithfully. All honor and glory and thanks are yours. Holy Trinity of love, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that's better. I charge you today to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of God Almighty rest upon each of you this day and throughout eternity. Amen.